All right, good morning, everybody. Wall Street Jesus here, Saturday Sweep Series. Uh, we are in July. The summer has begun, uh, and we'll get rolling here. We got earnings season uh, here already. You know, we were just talking, Joe and I, we we're just talking about how time flies. Um, he's actually got an article about how time seems to have speed up as we get older, and you hear everybody talk about this. Um, but basically, it just, you know, now it feels like earnings season's around us 24-7. You know, so dragged out, but that's it. Boom, snap of a finger, and now you got some major bank earnings uh, not too far away. So we'll talk uh, about that, navigating through earnings season, uh, because obviously there's a lot of risk there. Uh, but, you know, if you plan the right way, you prepare yourself um, and you understand the risk you're taking by holding into earnings, um, it's okay. You know, you're totally fine. But if you're not prepared, obviously you can uh, get hit over the head. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll recap some of the recent action. Um, it's been on the quiet side. Uh, but there's been some decent action here and there. Okay. Um, we were talking on Friday in the room, in the steam room, um, how some traders may like this slow, methodical pace. Uh, because a lot of times, even as a day trader, when there's a lot of flow, okay, and even though there may be a lot of quality flow, but there's a lot of action around you, a lot of names to choose from, um, it can be overwhelming. You know what I mean? There's do I take this one? Do I lock this gain in so I could go into this thing? Um, and it's been now probably a lot to do with the summer and the market taking a breather, uh, well, NASDAQ taking a breather. Um, it's been very selective, okay? And you really have to pay attention to your entries. You know, it's not that market that goes up every single day. You know, that's not the norm. Um, and you really got to wait for your spots and pick the right spots, um, you know. But it's there are opportunities there, and we'll talk a little bit about the end of the week and how that set up. Uh, for me, uh, I was just mentioning it was a pretty frustrating day for me as a day trader Friday, um, and the reason being the simple reason being Thursday into the close, everything that I look for that we mentioned here many a times, uh, you know, sentiment stuff, put the call stuff, everything was lining up for a high probability squeeze, okay? That was late into the day Thursday, so that would set up for Friday morning. Uh, the problem was there was the job number Friday morning, and with that, you always have the risk of a gap up. I would have taken a gap down in a heartbeat because uh, any – call sweeper activity into that gap down, I would have been all over uh, with everybody leaning on the on the protection side going in. Uh, but the opposite happened. Uh, we got a gap up and the market strengthened throughout the day. And I'm just, I'm not comfortable really chasing these gaps, you know, especially this type of market environment. Um, I'm just not comfortable doing it. And to be honest, if the flow wasn't that aggressive into the gap up either. So it was it was limited. Like I'll give you an example. The two names I traded, you probably, if I gave you a million tries, you couldn't guess them um, into the gap up was Kimberly Clark and Kraft Heinz. All right. And the only reason I did, uh, they didn't gap up. They were flat. Kraft Heinz was red. Uh, and I saw that as an opportunity, you know, on the day trade side. Uh, so just to get an idea, but uh, let's go over it anyway. Let's let's start there. We'll go over um, how this market set up for this past week and uh, what to look for maybe going into next week. So basically, this is the Thursday, okay? And again, if you remember uh, what we spoke about in some of these past Saturday webinars where the market is in some consolidation, okay? He's taking a breather. doesn't have to be a correction per se, even though the NASDAQ names, which have been on fire prior, are in some sort of correction. 
uh, but the overall market's just in a little consolidation. You know, look, it, it looks could be similar to something like this we've seen back here. Okay, who knows? So the playbook in this type of market environment is to wait for weakness. Okay, wait for players to sell. Wait for those sellers to come in. Uh, more importantly, you want to see sentiment line up on your side. I mean, people are getting a little too bearish out there. They always seem to do that into weakness, never into strength. And then you look for the opportunities in flow, okay? Or, you know, you can make a play on the overall market, or you can look at individual names. Uh, for example, uh, we were talking about Thursday into the close how really the tech stuff is the sweet spot for a squeeze because they've been hit over the head harder than everything else. Okay, so if you're playing for that squeeze, you know, you might look towards tech and some of the tech stuff to take advantage of it. Um, and like I said, the flow as far as quality, okay, the quality aggressive activity we've been seeing has been extremely selective. Now, you take out some of the groups that have really been just a tough trade, okay, one in particular is energy. Like, you really need to be quick in energy or you can get totally run over, right? These oil names, they're ridiculous. So if you take that group out of the equation, um, you know, you have retail really heavy, nothing much cooking there, very isolated names. The only, the only place to look is really you got NASDAQ where you can look for that squeeze and feel confident about it. Uh, so that's where primarily we were looking and seeing some of the flow. And, for example, um, you know, the AMD, as a lot of you are aware, um, had a, a, a nice quick move with a ton of action behind it. Um, this one in particular, AAOI, uh, was one of the more aggressive uh, order activity this past week. Uh, I think it might have been last week. But anyway, one of the best-looking names as far as order flow is concerned in, in the tech land. Um, we even some of the financials, uh, but they've been the opposite. They've been strong. You know, names like JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, those have been the three uh, wise men in that group that have seen flow. Um, but again, so going into Friday, tech has been hit the hardest. Tech was lined up the best sentiment-wise, meaning people being bearish. So you would look to make a play on tech if you were a swing trader, you know, at that particular time Thursday. Um, a day trader like myself, I was hoping for, like I said, a flat open, some weakness. And then I would have been looking for, you know, specific names um, to hit the board in tech. Uh, I'll give you an example. Thursday... Uh, as the day went on, I was looking for any tech sweeper I can get. Uh, I traded WDC on Thursday. It was red and had a nice um, push throughout the day. Um, I even, uh, NVIDIA, I traded for a bit. So when when things line up on the sentiment side, um, you know, that, that's the game plan. So this is how it looked going into Friday, you could see. And even tech held up nicely Thursday. You could see the selling was just getting tired. Okay. And then we had the gap up off the job number. Um, and that pretty much ruined my day Friday. I went from a euphoria feeling going to bed Thursday, thinking Friday could be a solid day for me, uh, to miserable and frustrated. Because uh, I really just had to grind it out. Uh, it just wasn't there. Uh, but that's, you know, that's that's the web we weave, right? I mean, sometimes as a swing trader, uh, you got to wait for your opportunities. You got to be more selective, but there are benefits to being a swing trader. You know, you got to take on more risk because you're holding overnight, but you also could take advantage of an opportunity like this where I really couldn't. All right, and I don't know if you guys could see here. I should have brought a couple of the other charts with me, but because uh, this basically is an hourly. Here's basically the, the, the put the call. You're not going to see much here, but you can see we had a little bit of um, excitement on the call side, meaning people were a little too bullish 
earlier in the week. Um, and then you can see the rise here. You know, once you get over this one, you know, that, that's telling you puts are getting a little too hot. Now, I look at some other things that I don't have here. Uh, this is just a simple volume put to core ratio. Uh, I look at some other sentiment charts, uh, and going into Thursday's close, they were all lined up in a green zone. Uh, a lot of you are familiar. You've probably seen that uh, graph, the squeezometer, uh, where it's the odometer, green, red. Green meaning, you know, uh, people are a little too bearish, so that would mean looking for a bullish entry. Uh, that was pretty much in the green into Thursday's close. So, like I said, everything was there, uh, and then it's not a coincidence whether it's the same day, the next day, a day or two later, you get some sort of squeeze uh, where you get these shorts and puts run over, okay? So that's where we are at going into next week. Now, what do you do from this point? That's all great, right? Fine and day. What do you do from this point? There's a couple things. One, we have earnings coming, okay? And considering that, first we have the bank earnings, so that's priority number one. Uh, but I will say this, in tech land, and those of you who know me know, I hate earnings season. I hate it. Because the flow is disgusting, sloppy, and I know from my past experience, earnings flow is just not the same. Okay, you're almost always going to see call buying in some of the FANG high beta names, especially when they're faring well into earnings, okay? Whether they're replacing stock positions or just have to have some sort of exposure, you're always going to see some sort of bull flow. But I will say this, going into this quarter, it's a little bit different in tech land that we're coming off a really nice wash, okay? So what I mean by that is, there may be an opportunity on the run-up into earnings. All right? So let me just make that clear. I'm not saying you buy Facebook, Google, Apple, and you hold through earnings, and if they miss, you lose all your money, okay? What I'm saying is if we see sweeper activity in some of these tech names, okay, and you have some time until they report, there might be that, there may be that trade there, that play on momentum there, okay, if you guys remember last quarter, which seems like a week ago for crying out loud, there was that type of action, not necessarily in tech names, because they were hot already, some of them, the fang names and so forth, but in some other stuff, like if you remember the Visa, Okay, they were buying off this little pullback consolidation. They were buying in this whole area here in Visa. And then you had a little lift into earnings. You didn't have to really take the risk of holding through. Okay, and that's a solid trade. And, you know, we spoke about this as well in the past. It allows you the opportunity of leaving a runner into the number if you so choose. Okay, but you got to understand, if you, don't, if you don't get the move you're looking for into the number, that doesn't mean you just hold it through the number anyway. Okay, you're playing the move into the number. If you don't get it, you don't get it. If you get it and you got enough that you can leave a runner, you can leave a runner. That, that plan doesn't change depending on the performance. Of what you get involved in all right so that's where I think there may be an opportunity and I could be wrong there may not be any flow in these names okay so that would scratch that whole idea out for me oh well I go solely based on flow all right but if we do see sweepers come into some of these names that would be confirmation that they're playing the momentum into the number and I really want um, I can't really get into the reasons, but a lot of you know it already. I really want to see sweeper activity. I'm not talking about block trading and that stuff. You know, the blocks, they could be tied. They could be replacing stocks. 
uh, replacing equity into you know a high risk um, moment there. But I want to see some aggressive sweeper activity, even if they're smaller in size, because that again increases the odds uh, in your favor of seeing some sort of momentum. That's the simple, easy way to look at it. Sweepers equal possible momentum. All right. And, you know, what names in particular? Any of these names. Any of these names off a pull. I mean, this name um, I know from day trading in the past. Every, I day trade this AAOI off literally two 300-lot sweepers. That's small. Okay. Because the name doesn't catch a lot of activity, and when it does, it's a rocket. You know, she can move. So, make a long story short, I've traded it a number of times this year as it's been, you know, a hot stock uh, for both day traders and swing traders. Uh, and then, you know, just recently, I think it was right on, was it this day or this day? It might have been this day because it went higher the next day. It caught some really aggressive sweeper activity. Okay, I'm not talking about just a 250, 300 lot sweep. There was some real deal buying in this AAOI. All right, and you know this still could be one of those names, depending on how it acts here. You know, I wouldn't chase this plus six Friday. All right, but if this thing consolidates a bit, pulls back, and you see some other activity come in. You may be able to play again the momentum off that action into numbers. I don't know when numbers are exactly, but you get what I'm saying, okay? And a lot of the action didn't even hit the board on this AAOI, but let's see what they were playing again. Um, August. So they were basically playing August 60 and a half calls, okay? You could see there was a block here, uh, 400,000 plus. Um, but there was sweeper activity, literally, for a good, I would say, what, maybe an hour or two. Every ten, five, ten minutes for an hour or two, there were small sweepers that continuously were hitting this line in addition to this block. You won't see it on this here because uh, they were too small to make the board. But you can see this block was basically uh, the size that hit the board. Okay, And there was uh, some other activity around it um, as well. Uh, smaller in size, but like I said, that that's what catches my eye is the number of sweeps because, uh, again, that'll give me a heads up on the momentum. So this is an example of what I'm saying here. If hypothetically we see that type of activity or even less than that activity, you know, more than one order come into a name, you could make a play possibly into the number, and that would apply to every single tech name uh, that has pulled back here. I'm trying to think of other tech names that have caught action. There, there wasn't a lot of them. I'm not going to lie to you. There wasn't a lot. But the ones that did had some quality. The CRM saw some activity into the pull, into the weakness. Uh, they love playing the earnings in this name. This always catches flow. All right, so this one may be one to watch. Had an update Friday. Again, you don't want to necessarily chase green. You want to look for these things on pullbacks. That's... You know, that's, that's where the gravy is out of. It's out of the pullbacks. Because when the squeeze comes, you're not looking to break even. Um, you know, you're looking to take off risk into that push. Uh, and we've seen it, some of these names, JD, which have fared a lot better. You know, you can see pullback here again. Uh, they hit up September's. There was some rolling out there too, but they some September action came in here in size, and you had this move. So something to keep an eye on here. Again, into the number, you see some activity come in. It's a trade. And you hear the word I'm stressing? Trade. Okay? Trade. Anything else other than a trade right now, you need to make sure you have time, and you really don't want to buy all at one level. You know, because there's no way of knowing. Again, the NASDAQ is a little bit different, well, a lot different than... S&P, but you don't know how long this is going to drag on for. That's, you know, we can chop around in something like this all summer. But if off these pullbacks, even if you're a day or two early, 
it's irrelevant. You don't have to catch the exact bottom, you know, but if off these pullbacks, you get sentiment in your favor, you saw some action come into um, a name you were eyeing on the pullback, you know, you're looking for an entry, and then you get some sort of squeeze, you can take off some risk. You know, leave a runner if you're looking for something further than just a trade or something, you know, stronger than just a trade. But anything beyond that, like, for example, you're looking for a play to new highs, trust me, I get it. Because nothing in this pullback tells us anything's different. There's going to be pullbacks like this along the way if this bull market continues and we go higher. These are normal. There's nothing wrong with this. So if you're making a play for new highs per se, or something more than just a trade, just make sure you have the time. And because you are taking time, you can focus on buying off weakness rather than chasing strength. All right, think back on the financials. You remember the financials? Do you remember how bearish sentiment got within the financials? What were they saying? The Trump trade is over. Rates, blah, blah, blah. Financials are the biggest short around. And don't buy the financials. Don't do this. Okay? And really, all that was going on, we may not have been, uh, we may not have realized it at the time, but all that was going on was, you know, it was consolidating a massive rally that has, you know, for, I mean, a decent rally post election. So, if you were, they could have been traded, right? My point is, you could have bought off the pullbacks and traded the bounces. But if you were looking for anything more than that, you needed enough time to allow that to happen. You've got to be realistic. So, Citigroup, you were looking for anything more than just these squeeze bounces. Just make sure you go out. You know, people say time, what, uh, go out a month? That's not time. You know, time is you go out six months. Time is not going out a month or two. A month or two, we were just talking about how time flies. That goes by like this. I mean, a month or two is a trade. You know, so you go out six months, you look to buy off some weakness, and you allow yourself to participate in something like this if it happens. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but you got to give yourself a legitimate chance in seeing that. You know, and as this consolidation gets longer in the tooth, I mean, the time, you can narrow down the time whether, you know, for example, like these financials were consolidating for a good couple months. One way or another, they were probably going to bust out of this consolidation in either direction. Yeah, so the same thing applies to tech. I don't see anything different. Um, people were talking. I saw some people talking in the lounge. Uh, war robots, if you're here. I heard you mentioning people on Bloomberg bearish. They're always bearish off pullbacks. They're always bearish. You know, you want to get bearish when you're turning on Bloomberg or CNBC, and they make you feel bullish. When you're watching CNBC and you're like, wow, I really want to buy a shitload of spy right now, that's when you're in trouble. Not when these guys are all bared up. You know, you, you, you got to look forward to weakness, but you got to understand that at the same time, you want to be realistic in what you're looking for. Okay? You don't want, in other words, when you're in this type of consolidation, you don't want to pick one spot and load up on five, six different tech names all at one level, and if you were early, you get run over and now you're smashed. You know, there's this common sense that applies to, to this game. You, know, you want to buy off pullbacks. You get a pullback, you add a name. You know, you're early there. I, I, again, I'm talking about longer term now. All right, we know, listen, the trade... It's easy. The tough part about the trade is this. What do you do after they rally, right? Okay, I buy off this pullback, but now what do I do when we're here? That's the tough part of the trade. Do I chase? Do I not chase? You're telling me I got to wait for this to set up all over again? But, you know, that's the tough part of the trade. 
You know, because if you waited for these type of setups, and what I mean is, you know, pullback, sentiment's there, and you see some flow, more than not, you're going to get a squeeze to sell into. There will be that one time, okay, out of, let's say, how many did we see over the course of just this year already line up like that? But there will be that one time where the squeeze is minimal or not enough for you to sell into, and the selling continues, and you get run over. But we're talking about that one instant, right? We're talking about that one instant. But more than not, you're going to get some sort of squeeze like this. Even this squeeze here was fantastic. Okay, but that, that's the trade right now. That's the trade. And again, we'll take questions um, in regards to this uh, if you have any. But you, there's a difference between trading, just like me. I mean, there's a difference between what I do on the day trade side than what somebody who swing trades, than somebody who builds positions over you know, a longer period of time. You just got to understand, you know, what you need to do, what you need to look for in these things. Um, so basically, that is what my game plan is going into earnings season here. Like, for example, we got the banks, right, coming up. The flow's been fantastic in the banks. They've been hot, okay? If we get any weakness on an intraday time frame, like I'm talking about my game plan now. So let's say JP Morgan is down 40 cents, okay? And there's some sweeper activity that comes in. That, to me, is going to be an opportunity for a trade. All right? And even more so in some of the tech stuff that has pulled back. Like, for example, the banks, you only have what, a couple days here until they start reporting, okay? So you don't have much time. Some of the tech names, you might have, you're going to have a lot more time. Like, for example, let's say the CRM uh, reports, I don't know, end of August, right? So CRM is, there's some selling there, and you see some sweeper activity come in. That would be a setup for a trade on a run-up into the number. You may even get... A tradable move without even holding that long for the number that you can take off the table um but I am that's what I'm expecting I could be wrong uh, I can't see how they're gonna leave some of these tech names washed out going into earnings both you know price sentiment wise and everything else and even flow wise it's been really quiet I can't see how they're going to allow these things to languish into numbers. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be at new highs into numbers, but there might be at least a tradable move where shorts cover and people get some long exposure into some of the better companies out there. I mean, what the hell else are you going to buy? Crude? You know? So, And there's been some hot names, like Avgo, for example. All right, you know, Avgo has court action all over the place. And then Thursday, was it Thursday? I think it was, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, there was a good-looking sweeper in Avgo, okay, off this pole. Now, to me, that's an opportunity. You know, this Avgo has been a stud. You know, well, well, you guys know all these, uh, Adobe, all these names. But you just, you got to be careful chasing these things. That's where I think you have to be careful um, is chasing. And, you know, there's always that risk that these things can run away. But when you chase, um, you know, it gets a little dicey there. It gets a little dicey there. That's where you're hoping for a squeeze just to break even. So, like I always do, flow into weakness uh, that's primarily what I would be focusing on, uh, especially in some of these tech names as they've been hit over the head. You know, but we're coming off a big day Friday, so um, 
you want these things to breathe a little. Uh, let's look at some of Friday's action. Like I said, Friday wasn't, um, for me, anything special. Let's see. Where did I have? Uh, but there was some decent order flow in um, in these names here. All right, so you got this Hain, and they finally, I think, are going to report a quarter or did report a quarter, and here you go. What happens? All the takeover chatter. I don't know if you guys remember. This thing was a hot takeover name. Like, there was flow, and to be honest, yeah, profitable flow uh, before it got smashed. But there was flow and chatter before they reported those accounting irregularities. You could see here, this thing got hot. And then all of a sudden, boop. Um, so it has been quiet since. And then recently, the flow really has started to heat up again. Uh, it got hot pre-earnings and, you know, all the way again into um, Friday. Uh, let me get you the board here. You could see show better uh, but this thing has already moved so yeah I'm just bringing it up because it caught action again on uh, Friday so here you go here so 621 616 yeah that's where it started again 616 so look here you got a Jan sweeper there 170 grand then some more Jan in July action here 621 and then again at the end of June and yesterday. So you can see 616, that was back here, somewhere here. Oh, yeah, into this pole right before earnings. So this is where it started catching flow again into earnings. And then um, has gotten hot now. Uh, but this is a name anyway. The reason I bring it up, um, you can day trade this name, especially if it's red. Uh, because there is chatter. Other than that, um, I really couldn't care less about it. Here's the name I traded Friday. I had to resort to some Kimberly Clark because of the gap up. These names have been smoked recently. Smoked. Let me move this over here. So here's the pull in Kimberly. These things were so hot. So hot. Um, and now you got an October buyer here. Uh, this is probably something, unless you like a, this, always the two ways to play it. I sound like a broken record. If you were eyeing Kimberly Clark for an entry off this pullback, okay, if this, again, these um, consumer defensive names, if this was something you, something you were eyeing and waiting for a pullback in, and Kimberly Clark is one of them, you can use that order as confirmation to some of the smart money seeing what you see. All right. Otherwise, there's another way to play it, and that would be to watch for repeat activity to come in. In other words, have this thing just sit around here, maybe up a little, down a little, and then they come after it again. You know what I mean? It has a pop, slows down, they come after it again, and that would uh, confirm that, Somebody's really getting aggressive behind this thing. Um, but otherwise, if you were waiting for a pull here, uh, you could, you know, looking for a trade, I could definitely see that. Uh, so they were buying, uh, they swept 2100 plus October 135 calls, buck 95. So around a half a million dollar bet there. It's a pretty decent sized bet for that Kimberly Clark. All right, uh, this was an interesting sweep too NXST. Uh, these are Jan 70 calls, which are about 12 bucks, 12 bucks or so out of the money. Uh, it was a sweep. Unusual sweep right there. And that's what that looks like. Next Star Media Group. So I don't know if any of you guys know this name, um, but an unusual sweeper there. And he's sweeping, you know, $70 calls. So listen, he's looking for something there, whether it's earnings related or, uh, you know, speculating on a takeout. Uh, so again, another way to play it because they're gens. Uh, you can wait to see if they hit it again, and that would be a great sign. 
I would like to see something a little closer in, uh, but you can see the premium there. These are not, you know, any cheapies. They're not like these are 20 cents. He paid 250 for those bad boys. So a name to keep an eye on anyway. Uh, this was a big bet. Save at Spirit Airlines. Uh, again, catches earnings, but this is a, a big bet for this name. Half a million dollar sweep, August 52 and a half calls, 250. And the airlines have been solid, most of them anyhow, that I follow. So this is what that save looks like. Uh, it closed up 220. They came into some strength but had a strong close. Really moved off the order, too. You can see the spike there. All right, so a name to keep an eye on. Look at the um, AAL. That has had, uh, these are tough names. Uh, the airlines are always tough. But AAL, Red Hot, has had flow. Uh, Delta as well. The only one that's been lagging and actually caught, in my opinion, probably the best looking bet of the bunch. The other ones may have caught more action, but the best order in the bunch is this UAO. Starting to move now a bit. Um, but, you know, did a whole lot of nothing here. And, yeah, there was news and all that crap. I don't know if it's still uh, anything still going on with that. Uh, but UAL has been a laggard in the group. Uh, and had a decent order. July's, um, which they might have to roll out to August if they're looking for more than what they get here. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Uh, so Save is the newest airline in the bunch. Uh, Splunk usually catches action in the earnings season, but you got here 960, September 57 and a half calls in Splunk. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me they come back again after this. The only thing I do like about it um, is this time it's off a pull, so it may create some short covering. Uh, usually it's into strength, and you got to be careful because even though it can push a little bit higher, sometimes you get these pulls that wash it out. So I would play it that same way, the Splunk. Let it sit here. See if they come back, hit it again while it's doing nothing. Um, and then it probably would be worth a, a trade, a quick trade at the least. Uh, this is the Kraft Heinz, another one I played, October 87 and a half. Uh, the only reason I played it was red at the time. This name has been seeing takeover speculation type flow forever. Okay. I usually ignore that action. As some of you are aware, I mentioned it every time it catches an order. This order flow has been a little bit different. And the reason why I say different, one, they're coming in off a pullback here. And two, these bets aren't as far-fetched as the other ones. The other ones are, yeah, they're buying them for $0.20, cents, $0.30, cents, so way out of the money. Uh, yeah, this is a good maybe what four bucks out of the money, but some time behind it. You know, the other ones would be front month and eight bucks out of the money. They also hit uh, August, some August buying the day prior. So I'm not a big fan of the stock in itself, but like I said, if you were eyeing it, uh, here's the Net E sweeper that's out to December, December 400s. I'm sure it catches um, an earnings too. Uh, that is off a pullback. So you can see, you know, off the pullback there, it looks a lot better. Uh, December's, you have some time. I would say you can hang out and wait for a confirmation there. Maybe they come in and hit it with something else. This thing never catches flow. Never. This never catches sweeper activity. So, uh, kind of if you... If you were looking, this is probably a spot where you got to pull the trigger because, like I said, I wouldn't hold my breath looking for um, any extra flow. And off a pull, you could just even be playing it for a trade. You don't have to play it for 400 bucks. She can move, too. 
Uh, and then the good old Visa, which constantly, you can see marked off on the boxes here, Visa spots that it has seen activity. Uh, they tattooed it in this little breather consolidation here. They tattooed it, well, they bought it, not as hard as here, but they added it into this consolidation. They bought a little off this pullback, and now they bought a little bit here. Uh, MasterCard actually caught some activity the day prior. So, you know, same thing can apply here. I mean, they were up at higher levels, but maybe they're playing, um, you know, a little push into, um, into earnings. But I still, I would try to avoid chasing green if um, you're looking to play like that. Like, for example, here, let me give you an example. The Visa, okay, just so you understand what I'm saying. This Visa here, when they started initially hitting this thing, okay, there would be a call sweeper here, right? So, in other words, let's say you decided to buy it at the highs that day. Or the next day, you thought it was breaking out, so you bought it off green. You know, then you had to sit through this, and, I mean, everybody I know was getting stomped out. I remember it like it was yesterday, okay? And then what happens is they buy more, okay? There's nothing. Now here, you're ready to chase green, right? Breakout. Fails. Now you got a little float lower. You're talking to yourself. They buy it again. You know, and all in all, you got decent entries out of the red. They keep buying it so they're supported in the name. And you have a decent entry to sell into this risk. I mean, sell and take off some of the risk before earnings come. I think earnings was this day anyway. It didn't do much with earnings. But, you know, this, basically this was the trade right here. From this consolidation to this trade here. All right, so that was the um, the notable activity Friday. Uh, like I said, it was a quiet week, very selective buying, but there was some decent order flow, selective order flow. All right, so I'll get to some of the names you guys are curious about. What I post here? Uh, oh, yeah, the Hain, and that's the save. Yeah, we spoke about that. All right, let me get to some of your questions. Uh, we could talk about some of the names or trading strategy or whatever the hell you got on your mind. Uh, let's start from, am I going the right way here? Okay, I think I do. Okay. Uh, and now I realize that a lot of you guys can't see the questions, so I'll make sure I'm repeating it. Um, Matt wants to know about WDC. Yeah, WDC Matt is just one of those names that they they just keep buying. They look to buy on and off any pullback. Uh, you guys heard me talking about the WDC. Oh, here's something interesting, if you guys remember. There were a lot of these tech names that were looking like they were going to rip, if you remember. And then Fang got hit over the head. The semis got hit over the head. Um, this one in particular. You know, the WDC broke to new highs, looked like it was ready to rock and roll, then got caught in the tech wreck here. But, again, I traded off a sweeper that came in off this dip. They seem to do it every time. This light is another one. You remember how um, I said it pretty exciting about that flow that came into this consolidation here uh, because it was unusual sweeper activity. And, you know, I mean, the market's pulled so that, that guy got caught, uh, and I was hoping for a late-day surge, some late-month surge here. But, you know, so the WDC, my point is, off pullbacks, it's there's a trade there. You know, there's a trade there. Anything beyond that, um, you're going to need to uh, have enough time. Because this is not new, in other words. You know, Matt? This WDC has caught activity this whole year, this whole year. So it's almost like a micron. In my opinion, it didn't really have that explosion yet, um, but still, this is not initial activity. So my point being is I would look off these pullbacks, like we've had one here. I would look for action there, and, you know, like I said, you at least have a trade there. Anything more than that? 
make sure you have time. Like, look here, okay? These are the past, what, three months? And you can see, you know, choppy, grinding uptrend. So just to be aware that that's what you may be in store for. All right, what else here? But that's WDC. I go in the right order. Okay. Uh, Ben's asking about UVXY, SVXY. And Ben, um, I was mentioning that a little bit earlier before the webinar to you. There's only one thing I look for in those things, okay? And that's sweeper activity, and that will give me a heads up over the short term. And what I mean by that is this. With UVXY, if I see UVXY put sweepers, okay, so that's telling me that the smart money is aggressively betting against volatility. A lot of times I will use that and position for a squeeze, right? They're betting against UVXY, so I would play the other side of that, look for a market squeeze, or you can make a play on SVXY. Um, but we're talking about intraday. Anything beyond intraday, these things, you're asking for trouble. Then that's not what they're for. You know, people like to talk about the UVXY. You can't really swing trade UVXY. You'll get destroyed in this thing. You know, these things are, I mean, that's what they're made for, aren't they? They're made for intraday, hedging and, and, and playing. So you got to be careful with these things, but that's that's the only that's the only thing I look for in these things. If I see a VXX UVXY put sweeper, that's telling me that there's a high probability of a squeeze coming intraday, and that's the only uh, way I would play that. All right, where am I here? See, I get lost. I got to go back on. Uh, Matt saying 8.30 earnings on CRM. So August 30, that's a, that's a lot of time there, a lot of time. So it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, and like I said, if you look to buy weakness, could possibly be a nice trade there. I mean, they're going to hammer CRM into earnings? It's possible. Uh, but keep your eyes on the flow. There's been some flow there already, August and September. Uh, and we'll see how that lines up. Uh, Steven saying, you may not be able to tell at this point, but could you look at this trade in XLP on Friday? Looks like someone sold the in the money August 56 puts and bought the August 56 calls. Yeah, that's nonsense, Steven. Don't even worry about it. Most likely tied to stock. And anytime you see that, where they sell the same line, I mean, or buy the same line, uh, so you could be closing that. Uh, 10 out of 10 times, it's tied to stock, especially when they're inside. So I wouldn't um, – I'll take a look at it, but I can tell you right now, all you had to tell me was August 56 puts, August 56 calls in size, and it's nonsense. Uh, Damn Jen saying, can you please give your view on GS? I saw someone bought 7 7 230 calls, but closed zero on Friday. Uh, GS, so those expired, though, you're saying? So I really don't have an opinion uh, on that. Those expired. Those are weeklies that expired Friday, 7 7. So the best names there, I you know, I mentioned it earlier. You got Citigroup has been the best of the best in financials. Uh, again, listen, financials are going to see flow. You know, they're, you can't just go off just any buyer in any of the financials. They catch a lot of action. So the best of sweeper activity, and that's what I pay attention to the most, has been in Citigroup, and it's been the case for a while now. You see the box here. This is where they really started to get aggressive, right into this little pullback here. Okay, and that's been the case since. Um, Bank of America always catches activity. Uh, Goldman hasn't really seen, Goldman has just been in weeklies, hasn't seen much of anything beyond that. And J.P. Morgan, um, in recent days, 
the flow has been hot. Uh, if you remember into the stress test, they were sweeping the daylights out of those cheapies. They scored in those things. Um, so they rolled those out, and then this past week, we saw the action there get hot. I actually traded J.P. Morgan, which I rarely day trade some of these bigger banks, um, but really had some nice action on, what was that, Thursday, before a late day fade. Where is it? I can probably find it. Thursday. Yeah, so here, had this grind and then faded with the market and everything else late. Uh, but really nice action sweeper activity early on into uh, this push higher. So that's what I would say. Overall, Citigroup, best of flow. Uh, then you got, you know, names like J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. Let's see sweeper activity uh, from time to time. But, you know, the banks, you got to understand, the banks now, I mean, this is, in my opinion, this is not the place here. I, I, depending on what you're looking for depending on what you're looking for. Like you've gotten a little breather here, okay, there could be a trade, a quick trade out of it off action. But, you know, expecting this type of move from up here now, it's not the, it's not the right place. You know, you want to look for these things before they move like this. Now everybody likes the financials again. They hate tech. Uh, what else we got? Amazon. We've seen some flow in Amazon, but nothing. Uh, here's the flow in Amazon. Let me see. I don't think it was sweeper activity, though. Amazon. There was another buyer that didn't make it to the board. What was he buying? Uh, but this is one of the last buys in Amazon. There was also another one after this that didn't hit the board. I'm trying to think. I can't remember. Uh, but the, this guy here bought August 1075s. Yeah, about 600,000 share block. But that catches earnings. But that's the, the, the same thing there. Um, Status is that I think you could see a grind, a little bit of a lift higher into numbers, but I would still try to buy them on pulls on down days when they see action. You know, I wouldn't chase green, I would try to avoid chasing green, uh, but I, I you could see a lift into numbers there, no doubt. Uh, Frank is saying EDU and Tesla. Uh, Tesla's too noisy right now, Frank. So, I, I mean, honestly, I've, so we've seen flow on both sides. There was some put buying, then some call buying um, into the blood. It's too noisy right now. you got to let it quiet down there. Uh, EDU, not much flow in that name. Not much flow. Uh, but Tesla, yeah, I would let it. You know, as far as all flow, I would allow it to quiet down and then see what comes out of that. Because right now it's too messy, too noisy, people hedging, people protecting, people speculating. It's a big mess. Um, Microsoft. Microsoft is another name anchor. That's exactly perfect. That's another name that could see a grind into um, earnings. I would just try, I sound like a broken record, I apologize, guys, but I would just try to avoid chasing green. I really would. So if a day like Friday, I wouldn't chase this day. I would look for some sort of pullback. You know, even if you get an intraday wash, let's say Monday the market, uh, Trump said this, and they start selling, and you know you see Microsoft come off, 60 cents, 70 cents into weakness, especially if you see some sweeper activity come in, that would be uh, the spot. And, you know, you get, um, you're buying the calls at the right time too because they rob you blind. 
again, the reason why you want to be picky on your entry here is because if you're playing just for a trade, okay, and that's what you're doing because you're not going to hold through earnings, your entry matters a lot, especially in the options. Especially in the options. So you're probably saying, ah, what's the big deal? You know, another buck to the downside, buck to the upside. I mean, tell your premium that after you buy something and it's down a buck the next day. Uh, George, what are those? NKTR and PRA, P-R-A-H. Those are uh, biotechs, aren't they? NKTR, oh, what did I do? NKTR had um, August activity, really nice August activity. Um, hasn't really done a thing since. This is going back, I think it was April, somewhere around here. Um, I don't know. They might have some data coming in August, uh, but there were some good-looking orders there. Yeah, it's a biotech, though. It's a biotech. Uh, the PRAH I'm not familiar with. PRAH. Horizons Alpha Pro. No, haven't seen anything of that. Oh, wait, P-R-A-H. There it is. I'm looking at the wrong name. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see if there's any activity in that P-R-A-H. Maybe there was. Nah. Nothing that hit the board anyway. Um, so, yeah, the NKTR had some decent order flow out in August. Um, been there for a, a month or so now. Uh, nothing in that other one. Uh, George is asking, do you like shorting? I shorted Tesla this week and made great returns. I also bought a month-long contract yesterday for it. Uh, yeah, George, I do not short in bull markets. So, no, I don't short. Um, again, you know, depending on the market environment we're in, I would say I'll never, I will never short, um, but I focus on the long side. I'm more comfortable on the long side. Uh, the market goes up a lot more than it goes down, um, and I like to buy when everybody likes to short, to be quite honest. So, yeah, that's my gig. You know, I mean, you, it, this... There's enough long opportunities out there for me, George, for me, it's, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it, you know. It doesn't bother me to miss that one trade in Tesla where I could have got lucky. You know, I could get lucky on the long side of something, and there's a lot more opportunity on the long side, especially when you look to buy into weakness. But I've seen too many people get knocked out of this game on the short side. So I stopped doing that a long time ago. And when the market gets rocky, um, my, in my version of shorting is just to become a lot more selective on the long side. I don't need to short. Yeah. Protect my capital instead of uh, trying to always make money. And it, it keeps you disciplined too, George. I mean, you know how many traders I see constantly come in every day and they're long spy, they're short spy, they're long Tesla, they're short Tesla. What do you think? You got a remote control? You know? You have that you have that type of edge over the market that you can pick the up and downs in the name? Good luck with that. Uh, activity in IBB, Anchor saying, actually, XBI has seen the activity. All right, so here's the story in XBI. XBI and the biotechs had flow, got hot, exploded, right? So what you had happen here was sentiment got a little too bullish, in these biotechs and healthcare, they needed to at least breathe, at the least, and it's doing that nicely. Okay, 
So you had XBI sweeper. When was it? They bought that. I think Wednesday ish around there. Um, and it's just been breathing since. But I feel better about it now that this thing's been breathing. Because, uh, like I said, this, I don't like to buy off that without a breather. So you're getting some sort of breather here. Um, and what I would even look for these down days where they attempt to shake people out, that's where I would pay attention to the flow the most and see if they buy. Okay? Because you got to understand, even though there was XBI action and a decent amount of it, all right, it could still go lower. And I get the question, well, what, what about all that buying that came in? But here's the luxury they have. If they bought some XBI here, okay, and there's a pullback, while all of us are getting stopped out and cursing XBI out, they're going to pick a spot lower and probably hit it even harder again. And then XBI rallies. They roll these positions out further so they have more time in them. And all of a sudden, they end up hitting a home run in this XBI while all of us are talking to ourselves. So you can't mimic these guys exactly anyway. So you can't pretend to. You understand? So that's why the timing of these things, you know, that's why it, it, I pay attention to sentiment and stuff like that is because I can't mimic these guys and do exactly what they do anyway. So you have to worry about your entries. Where they may buy strength, You, it might be prudent for you to wait for some weakness. Okay, because they're going to add into weakness where you're going to sit on your position and just stare at it and stare at your paper losses and hoping to get back to break even. So that's the uh, the only thing here, this XBI. It is breathing nicely here, um, but, you know, we've just got way too hot, way too hot. So it's doing what it needs to do. But it did catch some really um, solid activity this week. Uh, where is it? Right here. So you had August, yeah, the August 83 calls. That's the line. And some 72880s as well. But August 83s, that's the line they bombed. And it looked like they added to it Friday. It looked like they added to um, that position Friday. Okay. So that's IBB. Uh, Michael saying, I jumped in late to AMD. Did I miss? Oh, I jumped in late. Did I miss any AMD? Um, no, AMD. I mean, has been. It was a solid trade. Here, here's what went on. All right. Basically, AMD. They were coming in, hitting up these cheap weekly and next week, really cheap stuff. Like I'm talking about for four and five cents. All right. Usually, I ignore that crap. Okay, but what happened with AMD? They were coming and coming and kept coming and coming and coming. I mean, they didn't stop. So when you see that type of order flow, you know, it's it's worth getting your attention. All right, so an AMD, what was it, on this day, um, I think it closed strong that day. I think it was the start of this day here, okay, they came into strength. And I think those nickel calls, who knows where they are now. I don't even know where those first first batch of nickel calls um, are at now, but they've been buying ever since. They even bought a huge uh, block of August 17 calls after that. But the problem now is this thing has had its lift already, okay? Pulled back a little bit intraday Friday, but I'm saying you, know, you can't chase this now if you miss this entry, you know, like I said, those nickel calls, I don't know where they are now, those weeklies and all, even if they doubled, I mean, that's a double. So you can wait, AMD catches a little bit of a breather in, they come in and hit it again. 
Um, that might set up a trade. Do I think AMD goes higher? Yeah, possibly. There was a lot of heat there. Most of them for weeklies this week, so they're looking to play on something. It's had big action. But, you know, the trade is the trade. That's the trade. I mean, the stock was up, what was it up? 10% uh, in two days? It's a big move. So I wouldn't necessarily chase here, is what I'm saying. Uh, where am I? NC, George, I love NC. That's my f favorite and only bio, I-N-C-Y. I love it. They are in September's. They are in September's. And you know what, George? Um, on this INCY, George is asking about the biotech, uh, the Baker Brothers special here. They, how do they work? I forgot what the timing of it, but make a long story short, they're amazing in this name. They hit up some weekly calls. It exploded. They cashed those in. They went into September's. Um, it had a nice move. I think this was the move here. Okay. Then you had this pullback. They hit up September's again down here. A second time. So that's my favorite biotech off activity. This INCY. Everything else is a roll. Not, not to say this is not a roll of the dice, but everything else is a crapshoot in bioland. Uh, who did I, did I miss any questions here? I'm sorry if I passed over you. I'm, I do this all the time. I saw somebody say GPRE. Is that that energy name? What name is that? Great play. Oh, the chemical name. That's saw some activity. Uh, that saw a little bit of activity. This sees activity. It's not shy. There was another chemical name too, OLN. That saw some action that was half decent. So these chemical names look okay. There's been some flow there. You know, I don't know what kind of movers these things are. So in other words, I don't know what your um you know what you're looking for out of these trades. Again, like everything else, if you're looking for something bigger than just a trade, I would make sure I have enough time. Um, but yeah, that GPRE caught a little bit of flow. Uh, and this OLN, they both caught flow. This OLN, they opened the largest position of open interest, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see, where is that? Uh, oh, but a couple chemical names. OLN, that's April, no, here. So they got August, August 33 calls on this OLN. And pretty much right here. I think they bought it here on this day. Could have been. GPRE looks similar. Now this one got beaten up a little further, huh? Yeah, yeah, some of these groups, I mean, these energy names, you see crude, crude finally pokes out its head and then gets stampeded to death. You just, you got to be quick in these sectors, otherwise it's, it's not worth it unless you're tucking them away. All right, let's see what else we got. INCY we spoke about. Um, if I have it, what should I do? AMD, hold this time. What do you have? Next week, what do you have? When did you buy it? You profitable? You know, which ones? The nickel ones? So let me know what you have. When did you buy it? If you're up, buy the, you know. Uh, any flow in LVS? There's been a little bit of flow in LVS. Uh, Win had the better looking bet. on this day so if you um, had to pick of the two I mean there was some flow in LVS as well but win has been the better LVS can catch better looking flow than what it has you know the win caught the better looking better the two uh, what MEIP where do I know that name that's a biotech too, right? That quote action? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, look at this. It's 
been hot, but yeah, it caught it caught some heavy action on Friday, I think. Two dollar biotech stock, this N E I P. Uh, no, I didn't buy it, Greg. I didn't buy it. I try. I mean, these two dollar stocks, I really don't fool around with, especially if they've been accelerating like this. You know, maybe if I could get something uh, that's been you know, playing dead, and I'm hoping for some juice to come in, you know, maybe get a quickie, uh, but not chasing. I don't like to chase. Uh, RH, um, there was, I mean, the trade is, there's some longer-term action in RH. What happened, RH, same thing, ton of action. Um, you remember the earnings, and then the shit the bet here? They bought the daylights out of this dip, and, you know, it's gone. I mean, I don't know. Now, what do you do up here? You know, wait for some pullback and, you know, let it pull back, breathe a little, and then maybe a new batch of activity comes in. Um, but, you know, this trade is over with. You know what's so funny? Um, I remember I day traded it. Several people in the room had it, and... This profit at the time was a beautiful thing. Like you bought here, and people were selling it here, and they were being patient <laughs> with this thing. Went, oh my god, that'll drive you nuts! That'll drive you nuts. Um, did you did you get back to me with that um, AMD dam? Where are you? I, I had it there. I host stock like fifteen. Did you get back to me? I don't know where you. Oh, there it is. I got it. I'm sorry. 1350. Oh, the stock? You own the stock? So you bought the stock Friday, you're saying? Yeah. I, I mean, what? so you're asking me what you should do with the weeklies? I don't know, damn. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you bought basically... The tippy tippy top of this rally, you realize that, right? And I'm not trying to make an example out of you. I'm just saying, you ignored basically you ignored all this activity, and you decided at 1350, I want to buy this thing, or you bought it on the pullback Friday. Anyway, listen. I don't know what you're looking for. You're looking for the quick move. You know what I'm saying? You're looking for it to bounce back. I don't know what you're looking to do. But what I'm saying is you can't buy, you can't chase. You understand? Like, for example, you see this move here? People got away with chasing, right? If you chased, you got away with it the next day. They got lucky because eventually they're going to get caught in this. More than not, when you chase, you're going to get caught. And you're playing on the call side. And... It is the absolute worst time to buy is when premiums are getting all jacked up and everyone's all giddy bullish. You have to wait for dips. So, I don't know, like if you bought this Friday, you're saying, and you're looking for a push higher, I mean, yeah, can there be a breather first? You may be down on it. I mean, you should be expecting that, right? I don't I don't know. Like you're you're asking me to predict the future in AMD. I have I have no idea. Nobody knows. Anybody who tells you is full of shit. All I know is the activity was starting to heat up here. And the stock got hot. I mean it's up ten percent in two days. I don't you know, from this point, who knows? We'll see what the action looks like next week now, especially if there's any weakness. But can it go higher? Yeah, it can go higher. You know, they might be playing for something. Who knows? Can you get lucky, see some news? Anything's possible. Um, but, you know, no matter what I tell you, damn, is what I'm saying, I can lie to you and make you feel better, but it's, what's that do? <laughs> what do you want? You want me to lie to you and tell you, yeah, I think AMD is going to 20, damn. Don't worry about a thing. 
Nobody can tell you. They're all full of shit if they tell you they can. Uh, Tomer with the X. I wouldn't, I, if you're asking about the X, there was some put action Friday. I wouldn't make too much out of that. Um, I think it's protection on all that buying that we have been seeing. And you got that tariff vote and stuff coming up. So I don't know the details of that. But um, I would pay attention to see if they if they buy into this weakness. I wouldn't make too much out of the put action that was coming in, if you're concerned about that. That wouldn't concern me as much. One, you're going into earnings. Um, two, there was a lot of buying for weeks now, so they could be protecting that. Um, yeah, that's the extent of it. I would, you know, I would see a good indication of the flow going forward would be if they come in and continue to support this thing as they had. Um, but you also have earnings, right? So you got a couple of different bulls in the air here. But if you're if you're concerned or asking about the put action that we see in Friday, I wouldn't make too much out of that. You know, like all the put action. Um, you hear me talk about. I wouldn't get wrapped up into that. Uh, what else we have? STZ, December 200 calls in STZ. Is that good? STZ. STZ was, um, so wait, you caught it pre-earnings? Oh, look at you. Yeah, I mean, they had, STZ had some big bets. The problem is, the problem was, you had to take the risk of earnings. So, um, but otherwise, STZ quit some big time action. Earnings were in the way. But yeah, yeah, the action's been um, pretty robust in that STZ. Uh, Pepsi, I think, had some small action Friday, Ani. Nothing major. Uh, you remember the Pepsi action uh, we saw not too long ago. Oh, it's got earnings? Yeah, so does everything. You know, and you guys know my feeling on earnings. The post flow is what really will set things up, um, you know, into the fall, I think. Uh, but, right, it's, it's just a weird market. You know, it's it's a very strange market out there. You have this constant major rotation, okay, and it's like they rotate, and then they realize, why are we even rotating, and then rotate back, it's craziness, I don't remember this big of a divergence um, between groups, you know, so it's, it's made it even difficult, like, for example, uh, and we were talking about this with members last week, I used to look at just a broad base sentiment stuff, right? I used to look at a measure of on the, the whole equity put the call and the measure on spy and stuff like that. You you can't really do that now. You have to at least have an idea of what you know sentiment looks like in Nasdaq issues as opposed to everything else. You know, or even individual sectors. It's crazy. Like individual sectors so far off from each other. And, you know, you always would have that risk-on, risk-off separation, but there's no logic now. You know what I mean? There's no logic. And they march to the beat of their own drum. It's it's in a lot of confusion. And even more so that you have to be on the quicker side, especially with these groups that are under pressure. Uh, because, you know, if you're not, you're just going to get run over. You're going to get run over, um, and if you don't have enough time on what you're buying, you're dead in seconds. You're dead. So that's why I think this tech pullback is a blessing in disguise because in reality, I mean, it's the only normal thing out there right now. You know, it's a normal pullback. You don't have to worry about a commodity. right? Like, I tell you, like we were talking about the energy names. This energy name could look good. It could look great. The flow could look great. But if crude gets its ass kicked Monday, this thing is getting whacked too. It's not going to be the only crude name that outperforms. So 
Yeah, you don't have to worry about that commodity and stuff like that. You can even steel, copper, you got to worry about the Trump things. And there's always that overhang, you know, that outside overhang. Um, tech, you know, it's, it's pretty clean cut. Now, earnings are going to be the one thing everybody focuses on. Um, and the earnings have been ridiculous. They've been great. So we'll see what happens. I would like to see more tech flow. I don't know if I want to see it pre-earnings, but just in general, uh, the tech flow has been very selective. I would say that very selective. Uh, I don't know if it means anything. It just can mean that they're you know they're letting these things breathe a little bit. Uh, like Facebook, yeah, haven't seen you know this flow. There's always flow in Facebook, but usually Facebook will catch you know that missile order or um, a day of sweeper activity throughout the whole day where you can day trade it, buy it on dips, and it just it hasn't had that, you know, juice, that momentum type flow. On uh, Netflix, you know, there was that one December buyer, and that's it. That's it. And that was back here. And what are the names? Um, Apple, again, always catches flow, uh, but not anything aggressive. Google's quiet to begin with. And, you know, Google, Apple, I mean, Google, Amazon, names like that, don't catch as much sweeper activity as a Facebook, Netflix. They're rare, uh, even though they were catching them when things were hot. Um, but things are quiet. You know, things are quiet there. Uh, you even have, uh, you know, like the NVIDIA, uh, depending, and, and listen, that's why there's a trade for everybody. You know, there's a style for everybody. It's about what you feel comfortable with. You know, you got the majority of traders or most traders who can't be in front of a screen all day. They want to buy NVIDIA. They want to buy calls and leave it alone and hope for an explosion. But there's trades in between all that. You know, there are trades in between all that. And especially on an intraday time frame. And that's why, George, to answer your question, I don't need to short, you know. I'd rather wait for the opportunity on the long side and look to take advantage of that. Keeps me out of trouble, keeps me disciplined, it keeps me from over trading, more importantly. Um, you know, when there's nothing there, there's nothing there, I'm not looking to force anything. Uh, David's asking about Alcoa. Yeah, Alcoa's had some really nice flow too. Had a big bet, Alcoa. Um, and had a move. When was that Alcoa bet? I think it hit the board, right? Let's see. These are small. Here it is. July. So these are going to expire now. They may roll them out. 627. So that was at 32 bucks. 627. Yeah, so right here. I uh, had a big bet. They may have even rolled them out already. I haven't really followed it. Uh, but Alcoa has looked good. you got earnings coming soon there too, right? Alcoa is usually one of the first ones or no? Uh, so, yeah, Alcoa's look good. But same thing has been up a couple of days in a row now. So just be careful um, for a little pull there. That's all. Uh, who did I miss? Somebody was talking to me. Hold on. Uh, GLD, Chuck is asking about GLD. I don't know. Gold doesn't excite me. That being said, I've never been excited about gold, okay? But GLD is getting set up sentiment-wise. Um, it's almost there. Almost there. It's really close. And, um, you know, you're going to see activity in GLD no matter what, you know. I mean, it's gold. Um, what I would look for is, like anything, guys, when you see those re repetitive orders, a pattern of buying, you know, that's what sticks out. There could, there's buying and selling all day long and everything. You know, there's GLD coal buying, there's GLD put buying every day. That doesn't mean the stock is going to go higher or lower off any call or put buyer. It's when they get aggressive 
over a short period of time in a name or in an ETF or whatever it is, that's, you know, where the edge is. You know, it's not like people, I have people all the time say to me, oh, yeah, but, you know, uh, that uh, spy could have put buyer Friday. What's that mean? So every buyer of calls and puts is going to be right? I mean, that's impossible. So that's, that's what a lot of people don't really understand, I think, about flow. You have the flow, but there you're looking for certain things within the flow. You know, patterns of aggressive buying or selling that stand out, and that's where the juice is. You know, and we we were talking about this on Friday, AAOI. You know, there's there was AMD flow, there was Micron flow. You know, they all bounced. Okay, AMD had a nice move. Micron was getting sold off, bounced, okay? So they all higher from where they were. My point is that AAOI flow was something special, was different. You understand? Yes, they all caught some buying, but the action in AAOI was different than all the rest of the buying. And why was it different? Because... It had a different nature, a different style to it. You know, I mentioned earlier, AAOI doesn't catch that much activity. It doesn't see that type of activity. And when you see somebody getting really aggressive, tripping over themselves to own and get some long exposure to a name like AAOI, more than that, it means something. More than not. But I think that's what a lot of people um, don't understand is that just because something caught a call or a put buyer doesn't mean it's going in that direction. There's so much buying. You want me to pull up the flow on a, uh, that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis? You want to see how much call and put buying there is? You know, 99% of it, 99% of it, I totally ignore. So, you know, and it, that's what it is. It's not only the individual names, the overall flow. You know, the overall flow sometimes can signal things. All right? Cause, and, and that's where the interpretation, like, let me give you an example, okay? There could be put buying, right? You see this board here on the side? This is the overall flow, okay? This is what's going on on an intraday, day-to-day -day basis within the options market, okay? Anything worthy of size, anything uh, of size of a sweep is going to hit this board, all right? So now make a long story short, if you see a market is selling off okay and and this is another reason why I don't sh short George okay this is the main reason and the board is all red let's say there's some put buying right the board's all red it's 10 30 in the morning the the market's selling off CNBC's bearish they want you to build a bunker they're scaring the daylights out of you um, everything's red and all of a sudden something changes. What changes? Some sweeper activity starts to come in, lining up on the bullish side. There's some bullish positioning coming in. Okay, so like I like we were talking about um, earlier just with the UVXY, we see some put sweeper activity coming in. So that means they're aggressively buying puts on UVXY. Then you see some call buying coming in to certain individual high beta names, or maybe some ETF activity, SPY, you know? Again, it's not the one order, it's the whole ball of wax. So basically, the interpretation of that is, is market selling, the flow has looked bearish, there's put buying, that's normal. Everyone's bearish, that's normal, but now something is changing. Okay, the smart money, the aggressive money 
is now starting to position on the other side of things while everything else still looks bearish. And that's the opportunity. So now if you were looking at the board and you're looking at every alert as an actionable alert, you you would be in puts, right? You would be in puts. So you're buying puts because you're looking at the at the board and you see some put buyers there in size, right? Somebody bought spy puts or somebody bought this. But meanwhile, as soon as that flow starts to switch and turn, I'm looking for a long into weakness. And there's, you know, the difference in interpretation of flow and how it can be used completely different ways. You know, it's not about the order. See, like even here, you, know, you got an XOP put buyer, 1.3 million. Yeah, that's, listen, that's a big block, yeah. Now, there's been USO put buying, forget it, in size, but I'm saying that's one order, you know? If all of a sudden we see some put buyers start swarming around XOP, that may create some downward pressure right there and then. But the one order in itself, it doesn't really tell us anything. What's it telling us? Flow is weak? So, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying, George, is... There's a, different ways to use it, you know, but that's how I use it. That's how I've had success using and utilizing flow. It's not about the the individual names and stuff like that. You know, especially the bigger names. You know, like GLD, you're going to, like, here's GLD. There's got to be action all over the place. Let's see. And And look, GLD. He had, what is this, 629 that expired yesterday. Oh, that's way out. But I'm saying, yeah, put buyer, call buyer, put buyer, call. This call buying all the time. Look, put buying, call buying. And, you know, I haven't really seen anything in GLD that got me excited. But I will say this, you know, you have GLD now, because of this, getting really close to being washed out on the sentiment side. So if you were waiting on that, that might be an opportunity for you, you know? So it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Instead of chasing this and expecting a parabolic Bitcoin type move, you're waiting for this. And then you see some flow that could be confirmation for your entry. And even if you're a little early, you don't care. You're better off buying off this than up here. Can you be wrong and this thing just continue? Of course you could. But if you're bullish on it, you know, more than not, you buy off these pulls, you're going to make money. Makes sense or no? Instead of buying here, that's where everybody wants to buy here. And then you get caught in this, right? Oh, shit, i got to stop myself out. Oh, man, why'd I stop myself out? This thing's going. I'm going to buy here again. And then you got this. Oh, man, right? And then you got this. And then you, it's like a, over and over again. And GLD is a bad example. You know, it's a bad example because it's, it's a commodity. You know, commodities are difficult. Yeah, but I'm saying like in um, tech, guys, tech is a, is a perfect example, okay? I don't know, honestly, I don't know if techs are going to roll over. I don't know if the bull market in tech is over. I don't think it is, but I, I don't know. I'd be lying to you if I knew, and anybody who tells you they do is, is full of it. They don't know. Nobody knows. But what I, what I will tell you is, you haven't had too many opportunities of pullbacks in tech, okay? This is, in reality, probably your first one since this major move. You know, you had very small ones here, small ones. So this is your first opportunity. 
So that's where you you know you 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 weigh your risk reward there. You don't have to go all gun in a gun hole at one level. But like I said, you buy off this pullback here, right? Sentiment gets bearish. You see some flow in some of the names you you were eyeing on pullbacks. You take a shot. If you're early, so be it. Don't go crazy at this level. If you're early, there's a little more selling. All right? And sentiment lines up again, and you see some flow coming in. My point being is we're not seeing aggressive put activity come into these names. You know, we're not seeing that. We're seeing protective put action. So it's not like there's a major shift going on yet. And as long as that remains, you know, these things should be looked at as opportunities. Anybody have any questions about that, or um, did I confuse you even more? Uh, George, what are you saying? Biggest concern is the market is overextended. It looks like it's ready to plunge and been looking this way forever. Yeah, that's exactly my point. So, George, think about that, right? The market has been looking this way forever. You're just making the point. Think about how many opportunities you actually had if you looked at the market the other way, the opposite way. So every time the market looked like it was going to plunge was actually an opportunity to buy things at a discount. I mean, think about how much better off you would have been. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And listen, George, you're going to be right once with that outlook. In other words, there's going to be that one time the market is going to roll over. But as traders, you got to understand, especially if you're a trader, okay? And this is why I don't think the downside is worth it as a trader. Okay, unless you're in a 2008 Armageddon style type market, and you, you don't try to predict that. You'll know when we're in that. If you're trying to catch a top, to get into that, forget it. You'll go broke. But even if you're in little congestion type, consolidation, breathing type conditions, there's still opportunities. Nothing goes straight down. The queues are a perfect example. They've been the most under pressure. But look, pull. That's that's a tradable rally, no, George? If you're waiting for this. As an opportunity, you can't trade this. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thinks that if they're going to buy these pullbacks, it's either new highs or die. But there's trades in between. We were talking, if you guys remember on the, the prior webinars, we were talking. Um, let me pull up SBS. You remember here? We were talking the same thing for those of you who were around then a couple weeks back, a month, month ago, whatever it was. The French nonsense. Remember, Europe, oh my God. Oh my God, Europe is going to blow up. The French elections, what a disaster. It was uh, Trump all over again over there. But we were talking about the same thing. Right now, okay, it's obvious we weren't in this all out rally mode. Hey, the market was due for a breather, just a breather, and we were in that. So the opportunity, the playbook was the same thing. Buy off the selling, especially when sentiment lines up, and especially if there's no drastic change in flow, sell or take risk off into the rally. Buy off the sell-off, even if you're early. Okay, you bought here. You're down for two days. Sell into the risk off the rally. Same thing here. Buy off the sell off, and that was it. So that, that's what I'm saying. As a trader, sometimes these setups are even better. What I didn't like as a trader was this. Because if I like to buy, like I just told you, I like to buy out of breathers and pullbacks, right? What do you do when this happens? This is the problem. This is the hard part, George. 
when the market goes up every damn day and you're waiting for a pullback. But more than not, usually what you get is this to wipe out a good chunk of this. You know? So th that's the same way, you know, that's the same game plan here. It's the same game plan. You know, and as this gets um, a little l longer in the tooth, extended in other words, that's where you can maybe take on a little more risk. Again, I would focus on just buying enough time if you're playing options, okay? But as this gets a little lengthier, okay, or deeper, that's when you can take a shot and say, you know what, this squeeze, I'm not going to take that position off the table. Maybe I sell half, and I'm going to let that half go because I have Februarys, and if I catch this breakout, I'm going to cash in. But that was... um. Just in general, even day trading, when light bulbs started to go off, um, is when I would focus on when I look forward to weakness. I guess I, is the best way to put it. You know, it used to be that when I woke up in the morning and the futures were down, I was like, oh, shit, market's down. You know, now I wake up in the morning and I see the futures down. You know, I'm walking a little bit taller that day. Because for me, that's an opportunity, even as a day trader. All right, because my edge is if I see call sweeper activity into weakness, that's my strength. I'm buying when everybody else is selling. And my edge is that the professional money out there is aggressively playing on that side. Right, exactly. And as a day trader, the reason why I day trade and have been focusing on day trading, it's less risk. See, the, what would bother me about swing trading is when I would lose the move and I couldn't do nothing about it. In other words, I bought at the right time, I had the profits, but because I held a little bit too long, I got caught in a gap down or some downgrade, and it would wipe it all out. And that's part of the game with swing trading. You know, there's nothing you could do about it. But it would frustrate the living daylights out of me. So, right, the, the chop. The chop, when you're staring at the screens all day, would drive you nuts. So that's where I focused on day trading. Uh, I started to focus on day trading several years back um, because what I realized was there was no way to avoid drawdowns. There was going to be drawdowns when you're swing trading. Even if you're the best swing trader, there's going to be drawdowns, no matter what. And when it was all said and done, when I minus the drawdowns from the money I would make on the upside of swing trading, it wasn't that big of a difference from the money I was making day trading. And a hell of a lot more risk. But, you know, I understand the perks to swing trading, obviously. Trust me, I do. I even want to start doing it um, again in a very selective way. But, you know, there's certain things you have to do. You re Entries are so important, especially when um, you're an options player. I mean, think about it. Not only are you trying to predict something that's going higher, you got to predict when it's going to do it by. If that's not enough to tell you that entries are extremely important, I don't know what is. And, you know, you come into this game, you practice. It's like swinging an axe, chopping down a tree. You come in every day, you try to get better at your edge, what you do well, the more you do it, the more it becomes habit forming, right? You can, the more you focus on that, block out all the noise. 
you know, and as I would tell you, as a swing trader, based off the stuff we look at, you know, in the steam room, and I have looked at throughout my career, I mean, the sweet spot is the stuff I would focus on. And what I mean by that is sentiment lined up in your favor, flow there, and fire. Yeah, damn, but you know what the problem is? Damn has made a great point. He said the most important lesson is never, ever chase. The problem is, we, we all know that, damn. Everybody knows that. The problem is, if you got burned every time you chased, that would be great, because then you wouldn't do it again. The problem is, you get away with it in this market from time to time. It frustrates you from time to time when you don't chase. I just gave you an example here. The, the rally earlier in the year was a perfect example, okay? If you didn't chase, you would talk it to yourself because all the noise around you was how much money everybody was making and you're not chasing, okay? And even though I know they're over my career for 20 plus years, now when something like this happens, Okay, and sentiment gets that bullish to an extreme that at some point in time there's going to be either a wash or consolidation that wipes out a good chunk of those gains. But it's not that easy to think about that when this is going on and stocks are up every day. So what I say is there are certain spots to be more aggressive. Like you're saying, Dan, you know not to chase. So if and ever there is a time that you're going to chase, stay so light that it doesn't make a difference. You understand? If you make a little money, you make a little money. If you lose and you're going to suffer the consequences for chasing, who cares? It's peanuts. You know, you didn't get hit over the head. You'll be pissed, but you didn't get hit over the head. But the time to get aggressive is around the sweet spots. When things line up, you know, off the market consolidations or pullbacks, you know, that's the time where you want to make the most of your money. Because it's easier said than done to say, oh, I'm going to sit on the sidelines during all this. So I always you know, used to even do for myself or even preach to people trading around me, you don't have to stay on the sidelines. Just stay light, you know, stay light. As long as you're okay with whatever you own going to zero at that point, then who cares? You may make a little money, you may lose a little money. But that's... um. You know, that's what you want to focus on. And, again, I want to stress the point, though, because it does come across easier said than done, which is true, and too good to be true or whatever label you want to put on it. It's not about it working every single time. That's not what this game is about, okay? Just because you're buying off a pullback doesn't mean you're going to make money every single time. What it means is you're going to make money more times than not. That's the edge. You understand? It's not about winning every single time. It's about finding something that allows you to win more than you lose. And, you know, and once you got that and understand that, uh, you could survive in this game. You could stick around in this game. You're not going to break the bank. All right? You're not going to make a score that you're going to retire off of necessarily unless you step in shit and get lucky. But you're going to hang around long enough in this game to get better at the things you do and find more success. Yeah, exactly. That's... you. You end up losing all the money you made, you end up giving back, right? That's what you're saying? That's what happens. 
That's what happens. Every you see guys on Twitter. Oh man, we nailed Nvidia. We nailed Tesla. We nailed this. We nailed that. And then you don't hear from them now that they've all pulled back. What do they do? They went into cash. Come on. You know they're they're fully loaded in these things. They were fully loaded. That's why they were bragging about them. But now what happens is they gave back a huge chunk of what they made, if not all of it. Yeah, and George, what you're saying, George is saying he makes great returns, and then he's slowly giving it back. And and that's what we're talking about here, George, is exactly why, right? That's exactly why. Because early in the trend, at the right spot, you made a decent amount of money, and then you're chasing and forcing the rest of the way. Exactly. Exactly. So, but this game is all, you know, you, it, it takes time, and you got to get better at at it every day, little by little. You learn from your lessons, you know, and you try, you know, people say, oh, you blowing up accounts is part of the, you don't want to think like that. You don't want to blow up accounts, okay? You could always size up. When you get to the point where you're trading with confidence, you can always size up. But along the, the way there, to that point, you want to take it nice and easy. So your lessons, you learn from, and they're costly, but they're not hitting you over the head and knocking you out of the game. You know, traders have such a low success rate because they get knocked out of the box. They get knocked out of the game. And, I mean... How do you, you can't complain about that, George. How could you complain about that? You haven't blown up an account, you're up 20%. You're on, you're on your way. Yeah, now, the way you're going to run into trouble is if you're looking at that 20% and you're saying, shit, that's not enough. This guy on Twitter is saying he just made 500%. What the hell am I doing wrong? But meanwhile, you are on the right path. As you're learning to correct certain mistakes, you're making money. That's the best of both worlds. That's the way I would look at it. You know, you got to block out all that noise and just continue to do what you do and learn from your lessons. And stick around, man. That's the main thing. Stick around. The longer you stick around, the better the odds of success. People get knocked out of this game right quick. And don't worry about sizing up and making money. That'll come. You got to get there first, you know? You got to get there. All right, boys and girls, let me run here. I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys hanging out. All right. Um, for those of you, I know the most of you are already there in the um, um, lounge and so forth, but... Um, it's free. Go to WallStreetJesus.com. You click on Market Updates. Uh, you could join the community. Uh, and, you know, I throw a lot of free shit in here in the Market Updates section. A lot of stuff I just brainstorm, uh, just stuff I'm looking at, from activity, open interests, uh, sentiment changes. Every morning I'll post the open interest stuff on here so um, you guys could see. Um, and, again, if you're interested in, in uh, signing up, uh, there are several ways you can do it. We have 50% off the uh, first month for throughout the Saturday Sweep series. Okay, you can see here the community is free, and you get all this um, included with it. Uh, but 50% off the first month, you get everything with private Twitter included. Um, if that's a little steep and you want to test the flow and get an idea, we have spun off private Twitter. So you're basically... Um, Gonna get the alerts. You'll get the open interest, the free stuff I throw in there as well, sentiment stuff. Um, you're just not gonna get the audio, the video, um, and and that's where honestly, that's where a lot of people learn the most, especially as far as coming up with strategies and so forth. Uh, but if you want to test the waters, is a good way to start anyway. Uh, that's why we did it at a more affordable price, uh, and you can uh, get a feel for things. All right, again, WallStreetJesus.com. So easy. Uh, 
easy link to remember. I'll shoot it on here anyway. Let me see. All right, but I appreciate you guys hanging out and all, and I'll speak to you during the week. You know where to find me if you have any questions. Uh, if you're in the lounge, just ping me. And uh, if you have anything on your mind, I'll get back to you eventually. All right, enjoy the weekend, everybody.